NHK has learned it is highly likely that the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant did not follow procedures to prevent a hydrogen explosion. NHK obtained the manual for the number one reactor where the hydrogen blast occurred on March 12th, one day after the tsunami destroyed the reactor's cooling system. A failure of the cooling system causes the pressure inside the reactor's containment vessel to rise and generates the risk of a hydrogen explosion. The manual calls for releasing air from the vessel when the pressure is projected to rise to 853 kilopascals, double the operating limit. Venting is necessary to prevent the vessel from being damaged, which could lead to the leakage of a large amount of radioactive substances. The manual NHK has obtained shows that the pressure inside the vessel was close to the level that requires venting 13 hours before the explosion occurred. But the plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, did not start operating valves for ventilation until six and a half hours before the explosion. One valve was operated only one and a half hours before the blast because the procedure was hampered by high-level radioactivity. A former nuclear plant engineer says if the company had done this, the amount of hydrogen leaked from the reactor core to the containment vessel would have been smaller, reducing the risk of an explosion. <laughs> Tokyo Electric deny, declined to comment, saying it is evaluating its decision to release the air. This is so much bigger than fucking Chernobyl. The only difference is Chernobyl with the plume blew up and it fucking, you know, trickled into the fucking water. There, do you think it's a difference between it goes into the fucking air atmosphere or it goes into the fucking water atmosphere? Hell no! No! The fucking food chains are connected together. Efforts are still being made to bring the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant under control. New video gives a clearer look at the external damage caused by the tsunami on March 11th and by the subsequent hydrogen explosions. The video was shot by a plant worker at the weekend. It shows the serious damage to the number four reactor building and number three and number one reactor buildings. The ground around the number four turbine building is littered with debris. The tsunami wrecked a facility that pumped in seawater for the reactor's cooling systems. The video also shows new prefabricated buildings, heavy machinery and workers in protective gear. From just Fukushima's words alone, three core fucking meltdowns, and those hydrogen, what's these assholes came to me and blew them, and what's funny? The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it will install a heat exchanger this week to lower the temperature of the spent fuel pool at the number two reactor. Workers of Tokyo Electric Power Company entered the number two reactor building last Wednesday to check radiation levels, but high humidity prohibited them from staying more than 14 minutes. The humidity is believed to be caused by the high temperature of the spent fuel pool and steam from the pressure vessel, which may have been damaged. TEPCO plans to reduce the humidity by setting up a heat exchanger in a building next to the number two reactor. The firm told the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency about the plant on Saturday. It said it hopes to reduce the temperature of the pool from a peak of 80 degrees Celsius to about 40 degrees Celsius in one month. The utility also plans to install heat exchangers at the number one and three reactors next month and at the number four reactor in July. This is going to be a fucking major, major story going forward. Because, like I was saying, the plutonium in comparison to Chernobyl right now, just that the information TEPCO is getting out, and they're lying like a fuck. We know that. It is fucking a hundred times fucking Chernobyl. Easily a hundred times Chernobyl. Meanwhile, Tokyo Electric Power Company says none of the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi plant saw safety abnormalities after the March 11th earthquake until the tsunami hit. TEPCO is expected to submit its analysis of data on the reactors and operating records following the quake in a report to the government on Monday. TEPCO continued to receive data from the reactors after the earthquake hit until the tsunami arrived and destroyed all power sources. Afterwards, data could only be gathered when batteries and other power sources were used. TEPCO undertook its analysis using the available data and interviews with plant workers. 
The company concluded the quake caused no major damage to the main piping and other parts of the reactors. It found no safety abnormalities at any of the reactors until the tsunami hit. At the number one reactor, where a meltdown is believed to have occurred, workers may have manually shut down the reactor's emergency cooling system immediately after the quake. It is said the action subsequently caused problems in cooling the reactor. TEPCO is going through the operating manual for its reactor cooling system and investigating why it took nearly three hours to restore the system. The findings are expected to be included in the report. My guess is going to be thousands of fucking times Chernobyl. My guess is going to kill millions, literally millions, many, many millions of cancer in the long run. And you punk ass motherfuckers that come to my site, oh my god, it's going to kill you when you're 90. You're a fucking ignorant, ignorant, dumb motherfuckers. Don't post that ignorant, stupid fucking shit. At the Fukushima Daiichi plant, work to reinforce the spent nuclear fuel pool inside one of the reactor buildings begins today. Tokyo Electric Power Company says the work is necessary to install a cooling system for the spent fuel. An explosion four days after the March 11th earthquake damaged the structure supporting the spent fuel pool inside the number four reactor building. TEPCO plans to set up 30 steel columns on the second floor of the building to support a new concrete structure to be built under the pool. Workers are to enter the building on Monday. They'll shield the heat exchanger to prevent high levels of radiation from affecting workers, remove walls that might hinder their activity and erect a scaffold. TEPCO says it hopes to set up the columns next month and complete the reinforcements by the end of July. The company's latest plan for bringing the reactors under control calls for the re installation of a water recycling system to cool the number four reactor's spent fuel pool by the end of that month. The water inside remains hot at around 80 degrees Celsius. Read the fucking guys that are involved, not these guys that are the nuclear fucking regulatory fucking agencies or the nuclear fucking energy fucking that CNN and Fox and these fuckers. And to CNN, to Fox, to all you, there's going to be a fucking price to pay because this is not the fucking end of this. And there is a conspiracy. Why are you dumbing it down? Were you told to by the government? Maybe. And if that's the fucking case, who's guilty? The government or the media? The fucking media. The UN says it will study the effects of radiation from the accident at the Fukushima nuclear plant using data provided by the Japanese government. The United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation made the decision at a regular meeting at its headquarters in Vienna, Austria on Monday. The organization says it will spend a year analyzing the radiation data from the Japanese government to discern the effects on humans and the environment. It will report the interim results to the UN General Assembly by May next year. It's comprised of scientists from 21 countries. It has conducted long-term studies on survivors of the 1945 atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The organization is also monitoring the impact of the Chernobyl accident in 1986 on human health. The chairperson, Wolfgang Weiss, told reporters that based on the obtained data, he does not think the Fukushima accident has affected the health of residents so far. But he emphasized that people around the plant must be monitored for a long period of time. And I've said it for years, the only way you play with these motherfuckers, I was known as a bully buster when I was a kid. I grew up in a family of professional athletes, great big fucking guys, you know, and I was a little, little I was the runt. And I've known there's only one way. You punch them in their fucking mouths. And I've always known that. And that's the same in the Nuclear Commission. And the Japanese are starting to understand that. Because they've had that obedient society over there. Well, they're starting to protest. And we have not seen the end of this. We have not even close seen the fucking end of this. Tokyo Electric Power Company is measuring radiation directly above the number one and four reactors at the plant. It wants to see how much radioactive material is still being released. We haven't been able to measure the radiation at the source, so we're going to take more detailed measurements to find out how much radioactive material is being dispersed into the environment. TEPCO is taking measurements with an instrument attached to the arm of a pump vehicle that's about 50 meters tall. It took measurements 5 to 10 meters above the number one reactor building on Sunday, and it's taking measurements over the number four reactor on Monday. The firm will use the data to check the feasibility of a plan to cover the reactor buildings with polyester sheets to stop radioactive materials from escaping.
And you motherfuckers in the media, you make me physically fucking sick. The operator of the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant is continuing to transfer highly radioactive water from two reactor buildings to a waste processing facility within the compound. But the facility is expected to become full within three, to three or four days. About 47,000 tons of contaminated water has accumulated in the plant's turbine buildings and utility tunnels hampering Te Tokyo Electric Power Company's efforts to bring the plant under control. TEPCO is pumping a total of 14,000 tons of such water to the processing facility from the number two and three reactors, but the unit is expected, to, is expected to reach full capacity in three or four days, forcing the transfer to be suspended. TEPCO says it is studying whether it is possible for the facility to accept additional radioactive water for the time being until it starts operating a new processing plant. The new facility is designed to lower the radioactive level of contaminated water and then use that water to cool the reactors. It is expected to be completed by mid-June. TEPCO says the levels of the remaining contaminated water at the two reactors remain almost unchanged and that there is no immediate risk that the water will leak into the ground or the sea. The utility added that it is monitoring operations closely to prevent any leaks. TEPCO reported that it had discovered contaminated water leaking into the sea back in April and then again earlier this month. The utility has since taken measures to prevent further leaks. But as an independent reporter, any of every one of you fuckers, you got no integrity, you got no fucking balls whatsoever. This is the biggest story of our time. A group of parents of school children is calling on the government to lower its radiation limit for children. The group is from Fukushima Prefecture, where the crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant poses the threat of nuclear contamination. On Monday, member of the group, uh, members of the group submitted the Education Ministry a petition with more than 15,000 signatures. After the accident at the plant, the government set the yearly limit for accumulated external radiation for children at 20 millisieverts. The parents say the level is too high and are demanding that it be lowered to 1 millisievert, the level recommended by the International Commission on Radiological Protection. This is the biggest bucket story in the last. This is this may maybe end up being bigger than even Iraq or Afghanistan. My guess, yes. This will kill millions. Like I said, read fucking Bizarre Bomb's fucking writings. He won a Nobel Prize in '75. Read Einstein's fucking writings. This will kill millions of us. About half the residents living in two areas of Fukushima Prefecture, where an evacuation order is in place, have not left one week before the government set deadline. On April 22nd, the government ordered people in Itante village and a part of Kawamata town to evacuate by the end of May because of high levels of radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Well, the two communities are located outside the government's original 20-kilometer evacuation zone. Officials have been placing priority on evacuating households with infants and small children, but only about half of the 7,800 residents have followed the order one month after it was issued. Some residents remaining in the area say emergency shelters are far from their workplaces and their children's schools. Others say they will lose their jobs if they move away. People in areas where relatively low levels of radiation say they hope to delay their evacuation until temporary housing is completed in the summer. Officials say they will continue to try and persuade the remaining residents to leave, but meeting the deadline will be difficult as the evacuation order is not legally binding. Every one of us are living, breathing. It is in our fucking bloodstreams. Who it kills, who it dies is totally fucking random. Kevin Blanche. Meanwhile, some companies based in Itate are now monitoring the level of radiation in their workplaces daily. The government is allowing nine firms in the village to keep operating, provided they check and report their workers' exposures to radiation. A local precision equipment maker began conducting those checks on Monday. Some 60 employees received instructions on how to use a radiation dosimeter. The company's workers must take exposure readings on a daily basis before going home.
The company says it is also using various strategies to reduce the amount of radioactive materials entering the factory. For example, it's keeping windows closed and moving outdoor air conditioning units above ground level.